Okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the McCloskey matchmaking event. Um, the real purpose of tonight's event is to let allow teams to pitch what their idea is and then what they're looking for in student talent. We have other ways of matching teams with students. So if this matching, um, you don't connect with somebody tonight, know that we have student connections that will still continue to work and help match you your, with your teams. We are going to record this session. So we will actually have it on our website and we will send it out to all of our student interested list so they can hear your pitches and, and see um, what you have going on and what kind of student talent that you're looking for. And um, I got distracted by my phone, so sorry about that. Um, and uh, the Buzz It platform that everybody did a great job of um, putting their profiles on um, is going to be available um, for time to come. So we can actually post that on our um, web pages and say, hey, if you want to hear about teams, look at their pitches, find their profiles, this will all be available for them. Um, so how tonight's going to work. Um, so everybody's doing a great job keeping yourself on mute. Um, if you change your speaker, to, your view to speaker view, then you'll just see who is actually pitching. Students or teams are not going to be sharing slides. They are just going to be them talking about their idea and telling us a little bit about what they're looking for in team talent. Um, so that is that information. Um, secondly, you guys have all created the, your um, profiles on here. Um, if you have it on your other screen, on your phone, whatever you want to use, use the buzzit.ca um, keyword is matchmaking. You'll be able to see all the team's profiles. This is how you're going to connect with them. If you're a student looking to join a team, if you hear something that you're interested in joining, Go into their room and have a conversation with them tonight. This is a great way to hear about whether you guys are a great match. Um, and it's a way to hear about the founder's passion for their idea. Um, you can visit as many teams as you like. So teams, remember, if you don't have somebody um, come to your room, you know, the first five minutes, don't be discouraged. There might be students who see several teams that they want to visit tonight, and they may just be getting around to you. So don't get discouraged. I would leave your um, room open for at least 20 minutes after the event, waiting to see if anybody will um, come and join. Um, the, the link, like I said, is going to be um, open after the event. Um, so you can go back if um, you didn't find a student and you want to look at the list of students and reach out to a student. Teams can do that. And again, vice versa, students can reach out to the team themselves. Um, what else we got? So housekeeping. Um, well, I already told you about the 20 minutes. So stay in your rooms for 20 minutes after the event. Um, if you haven't already done so, sign up for student connections. This is just another way for us to help you get connected with students and students get you connected with teams. Um, after all the teams present tonight, I'm going to stay on the main Zoom room. Um, if you have any questions, concerns about McCloskey, feel free to stay on and talk to me. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions like that. And then after this event, we're going to send out a survey and we're going to see if you made some awesome matches. That helps us know, one, if you already filled out information in Student Connections and you're a student, we can take you off the list. Um, teams, if you ask for a student and you got enough students either from this or you need one more or one another, this is going to give you an opportunity to let us know that so we can continue to utilize Student Connections in the way that we need to. Um, those are my last things. I'll put these slides back up at the um, end of the pitches. I am going to, I'm sorry, read, reading my phone from the Buzzit contact person at the same time. Um, if you are a student who has just um, RSVP'd to the event, um, they're working behind the scenes to get your talent information up on Buzzit. So know that that will all be there by the end of the time that the teams have pitched. I will call on the team um, if they are present. Um, please let me know here. 
and then we'll turn the time over to you. Really try to keep to that two minutes. Tell us, tell us your name, your team name, and then a little bit about your team. Don't get into all the nitty gritties, like what problem are you trying to solve and what is your solution? And then what kind of team that you're looking for. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to stop this screen share here so I can see all your lovely faces. Um, if you, if I call on you and you're not here right now, which you won't know because you're not here, um, I will re-go through the list and pick out anybody who didn't um, answer the first time around. Um, so the first team that I'm going to call on, um, and I won't say this name right, um, it's Joseph's team with Aleka, A-L-C-E-A. All right. Yes, we're here. Awesome. All right. Go ahead. Okay. Hey, everyone. So my name is Joseph. I'm a uh, senior uh, business analytics uh, student at the University of Notre Dame. Um, and Alcia, um, we are working to fight um, and take care of the issue of outdated um, feminine product dispensers. Um, as my uh, co-founder knows, on a daily basis, women are faced all too often. Uh, with the situation of being busy with activities or work, being far from home. Um, and they find themselves in situations where, you know, especially on, um, on campus in Notre Dame, there are uh, dispensers that are out of date. They only accept change. Oftentimes they don't even have access uh, to items. Um, so here at Alcia, we're trying to revolutionize the feminine product dispensers um, through a new design and um, looking to take it into the 21st century. Uh, we're extremely passionate about this topic and anyone else who's interested, we'd love to partner with you. Uh, in particular, looking for students that have um, software engineering skills, but in general, just looking for people who are excited and passionate about this topic. We'd really love if we can partner with you. Um, thank you all very much and uh, hope, this, hope to talk to you afterwards. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, next team up is Arroway. Hello guys, I'm Aaron McGuinn. Uh, I'm the team leader of Arrowway, and we have two people on our team, Claire Marshall. She has your master's in entrepreneurship and then Connor, he has his in engineering. Um, just a little bit about Arrowway. I developed a patent to have instructions that go along, let's say an elastic bandage to teach you how to wrap any appendage. Um, we're working with Lift, Lift of Femia right now with Beacon Health and they're showing us the need and right now we are looking for uh, finance, uh, finance major. Anybody that understands the financial side of things to get things going. Thank you. Great, next up is athletic interpretations. Uh, here, uh, <clears throat> my name is Eris DeWell. Um, other other co-founder is Jeff Thrasher. Um, the name of the company is Athletic Interpretations. Uh, we've been able to get a patent on basically uh, boxing speed bags, um, allowing, telling people how fast they're hitting it. And that's just the beginning of the concepts that we want to do. Basically, we want to increase uh, community engagement for um, all different, for the world, for people, right? Cardio is hard. So we figured we can get people to hit a bag instead of having to, you know, go hit a treadmill. But at the same time, all our tech is going to have an app, basically technology, to could build a community of like, all right, hey, I want to compete. Let me go box and see if I'm faster than my brother or someone in Spain. So we're really trying to build a community of uh, unique um, sports activities uh, that people can do in, in uh, different uh, scenarios. So uh, we have, we're looking for someone, really, we need help on the uh, commercial side, like commercialization. Um, my engineering, uh, my background is in engineering, and the other guy, is uh, he's an x-ray technician, uh, and our passions are really in building and making, and, um, you know, we understand the business side, but that, that's made us better engineers and makers, <laughs> so we're looking for someone who, you know, who maybe has, like, tech skills that makes them a better commercialization or better business person. Uh, thank you guys. Thank you so much. Um, next up is Bar Buddy. Hi, yeah, that's me. Um, my name is Baxter Curry. I graduated from Notre Dame in May of 2020. 
Uh, currently, we're a team of four May of 2020 graduates. Two of us are in, we're in um, the arts and letters, and two of us were in engineering. Essentially, what Bar Buddy is, is a high-end locker system at bars that is a safer, quicker, and more sanitary way to deliver drinks. Uh, currently, in the uh, COVID climate, we um, are really trying to promote a safer and sanitary way of dispensing drinks, a way to keep drinks covered and behind locked doors at all times until the second a customer walks up to the locker and unlocks the locker with their phone. Uh, it speeds up the process of ordering a drink because bartenders no longer have to deal with uh, credit card or cash payments, and it also uh, maintains the contactless service, um, that, uh, which is something we see as a trend um, in the industry right now. Uh, with all that said, we're looking for any uh, student who's interested in the bar, music festival, or sporting industry space. Uh, specifically, we can have a student who works with app development or financial modeling, but again, whatever major you have, or if you have an interest in this at all, uh, we'll find a role for you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Baxter. Um, next up is Birdie Botts. Is Birdie Bots here? Can you hear me? Yes. All right, sorry about that. Um, so my name is Luke Cannon. I uh, graduated from Notre Dame in 2019. Um, and together with um, a founder out in DC, um, we're building Birdie Bots. So the problem that we're solving is 90% of a creator's content, whether that be on Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, doesn't last longer than a day. Uh, so we're building a SaaS or software as a service platform that saves creators time by automating and recycling all their past content. So our first product is focused on Twitter. Uh, we're launching at the end of the year and have hundreds of people on our wait list. So it's a really exciting opportunity to work with a startup up to, during, and after launch. Um, we're working with several kind of large Twitter influencers already. Um, and then, you know, we'll be launching our product publicly in just, just a couple months. So if you're interested in marketing, social media, uh, graphic design, uh, or software development, both back end uh, and front end, would love to talk. Um, and yeah, thanks for thanks for tuning in. Thanks so much, Luke. Um, next team up is BLD Zoom. Hi, this is Nate. Can you hear me? We can. Great. Hi, uh, Nate Sanofsky. I'm an alum of Notre Dame. I'm here with Build Zoom. Uh, so we're, you know, very much in an infancy, but, you know, the idea of the company is basically to streamline the permitting process for any building. Um, if any of you have ever tried to, you know, renovate your home or go get a building permit, it's just an absolute nightmare. It's a pinch point on pretty much every project. Um, so, you know, the idea is really, you know, there's a lot of prop tech and construction tech companies out there to pair people with a contractor or pair people, you know, you know, on Zillow, you're trying to find a house. This would kind of pair you with either an architect or a professional who can help you get a building permit. Um, so really we would love to work with, you know, students who have an interest in construction, architecture, you know, consulting, um, and, you know, would really the skills that we're looking for are kind of financial modeling, kind of coming up with a strategy, marketing, outreach, strategic partnerships, and then also anybody, you know, in real estate, architecture, construction, who, you know, wants to learn a little bit more about the business and kind of pitch people on, on using our platform. So, you know, looking forward to connecting with you and, and please reach out uh, if you're interested. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. Uh, my husband just heard your pitch and he's a um, contractor and he's like, yes, this is needed. So good, good pitch there. Um, next up is Brain Drive. Yeah, thanks, Patty. Hi everyone, my name is Jude. I'm the founder and CEO of Braindrive. So the idea behind Braindrive is that most of us have been taught very well how to drive complex machines like our cars. Uh, but the fact that 56 million Americans in the US alone, Americans in the US alone anyway, struggle with depression, anxiety, that tells us that we're really bad at driving our own brain. So this is why you, me, and millions of people around the world today, we struggle with our emotions, with our thoughts, with our behaviors, with our own brains, and that's okay. 
But science shows that our mental health is largely determined by how we interact with our brain's natural intelligence, what is called the autopilot. Um, this is called emotional fitness, and it's similar to driving a Tesla car, a fine-tuned skill that allows us to work with, not against, our brains. It's a skill that can be enhanced with the right kind of practice. And mobile apps today hold really great promise for mental health, but the current available solutions are not really rising up to the challenge. Mental health is much more complex than tips, tricks, and soothing music and someone just lecturing in your ear. So BrainDrive is a mental health application that offers science-backed, tech-powered, and art-enhanced exercises to teach people how to process their emotions and drive their brains to improve their overall well-being, happiness, and productivity. It is the first mental health application that is based on a propriety scientific model, explaining why it works and how it should be applied. It is backed by peer-reviewed studies showing its effectiveness, it's affordable, accessible, and attractive. So as we prepare for round two of the McCloskey competition, BrainDrive is actively searching for talents with experience, skill, or just plain interest in several areas, including tech, such as mobile and web developers, Swift, Java, Python, C Sharp, all that good stuff, IT, computer science, computer organization, architecture, mobile AI, something we're interested in, machine learning, deep learning. So tech people really were interested in you. Also business folks, MBAs with skill experience in mental health technology specifically, finance and accounting, and also visual communication, mobile app design, specifically Adobe XD or others, animation and visual design. If you have a passion for changing people's lives and mental health technology, we have a place for you. Thanks, Jude. Thank um, next up is um, Conker. Hi, everyone. My name is Matt Bayer. I'm a 2017 ND grad. I'm working with my co-founder, John Tudor, who did undergrad and his MBA at Canisius College in Buffalo. And our business is Conquer. And Conquer is a web application that we're working to make to help people with food allergies dine out with confidence. Um, so I actually developed a dairy allergy while at school. And it was then that I found out that dairy is in everything. And it's very difficult to eat out. Um, it was really nice eating in the dining hall, though because they have placards and that they show what ingredients um, and what food allergens are contained in all the food. But when you go out to a restaurant, um, you don't have that luxury. Um, so a lot of the times when you go out to the restaurant, you ask the server if there's dairy in the, an item and they generally have no idea. So they run back to the chef and sometimes the chef doesn't even know what's in the food. So whenever I go out to eat, I have to put a lot of trust in the staff to know what's in their food and to know that they're preparing it properly. And I know there's 32 million other Americans struggling with food allergies. Um, so this leads a lot of people to avoid restaurants altogether. Um, and we think there's a way to change that for them. So our application, we work with restaurants to get the ingredients to all their menu items. And then we get all the allergens that are contained in those ingredients. And we list on our website each restaurant's menu. And the users can go in, set up their profile with their food allergens, and look at menus. And it will clearly tell them what foods they have to stay away from or what parts of foods they have to stay away from. Um, so with that being said, we're in the very early stages of development. We have a, a starter website, but we're really looking to build that out. Um, with more um, abilities. Um, and we're also looking to build a user base um, through social media so that we can have some users um, to go to restaurants to pitch your idea with. Um, so if anyone's interested, we'd love to chat with you guys. Thanks. Thank you, Matt. Um, and if you guys aren't um, aware, make sure that if you have camera ability, let us see you when you're pitching. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Um, so next up is Cobb Fob. Cobb Fob. Hi, my name's John Naw. Um, I'm Notre Dame MBA 21. Uh, I'm doing the one year program. So uh, I'm the founder of Cobb Fob. So uh, Cobb Fob is an app where uh, drivers are going to be able to present police officers with their license, registration, and proof of insurance when they get pulled over. Uh, so the, the purpose of this is um, to make the traffic stop process easier and safer and more convenient uh, you know, for both parties. 
um, because when, when people reach in their, uh, you know, glove box and under their seat to get, uh, you know, their registration and proof of insurance, uh, you know, reach in their wallet for their license, that can be, uh, you know, that can create an uncomfortable situation and can even be dangerous. So this will uh, allow people to, you know, avoid having to do that. Um, and so I'm looking for someone who has uh, skill in, in app development, uh, you know, someone who will be able to you know, help with, you know, building um, you know, a, a, a version of this that you know, works uh, smoothly. And then also, uh, you know, someone who has marketing skills who will be, may be able to help with, uh, you know, doing the beta test and, you know, getting people to use this, getting people to try it um, and, and then get it to uh, you know, become more widespread. And then possibly also someone with uh, you know legal expertise, someone who you know knows about uh, you know th like the startup laws and you know how to kind of you know set up the legal entity and so forth, and you know protect the intellectual property and so forth. So yeah, if if you uh, you know have any of those skills and this is a, a topic that might interest you, uh, yeah, feel free to you know join my breakout room and we'll chat about it further. All right, thank you so much, John. Um, next up, we have Destiny. Are you here? To, oh, you are. Go ahead. Hello. Um, so my team is called A Real Second Chance. Um, and basically what we want to do is give people who are formerly incarcerated a second chance at finding better job opportunities, um, educational opportunities, and also teaching them like life skills. Um, and another part of the organization would be job placement. Um, so it's pretty, uh, we're pretty much in the early stages. So we're just looking for anyone who's passionate about social entrepreneurship. So, yeah, thank you. I'm talking on mute here. Um, next up, we have the Dollar App Store. Robbie, are you here with us? Okay, I'm going to skip over Robbie. We'll come back to him. Um, next up would be Equibean. Christina. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Christine, um, and I am currently a MBA here at Notre Dame, um, and I am representing Equibean. Um, so Equibean uh, started up as an idea because I have worked in the community development and education space and I've spent some time in Ecuador personally, and I fell in love with the country and decided I needed to learn more about how I can create access and jobs within the country. And so um, I absolutely love coffee. So I was just going to coffee shops, honestly, with friends and basically found out that over uh, half a million people in Ecuador depend on uh, coffee for their livelihood. But the reality is that only one to three percent of the actual price of a cup of coffee ends up in the hands of small scale uh, farmers. So using my business background and also my nonprofit community development experience, I'd like to create a supply chain that will uh, empower small scale farming communities and then also bring high quality specialty coffee to the United States uh, from the middle of the world. So uh, specifically the roles that I'm looking for, um, I'm looking for people with experience in supply chain and operations, um, ideally with uh, international development focus. Um, if not, it's totally okay. And then also anyone with the experience with international business in general. Uh, we are very much so in like the research phase of this. So I uh, don't need an expertise, but it will be a growing experience altogether collaboratively collaboratively with the team. So I would uh, be happy to speak with you. Uh, so come talk to me after. Thank you. I gotta learn not to keep myself on mute. Uh, thank you, Christine. Um, next up is Everheat. All right, hello everyone. My name is Tyler Ewer. I graduated in May of 2019, majored in business analytics in Notre Dame. Um, I'm also here tonight with my brother, Scott. He was mechanical engineering major as well. Um, also 2019, so um, we're triplets, so it's, it's, it's not that weird. <laughs> so um, basically, so we're Everheat. So the prototype we built um, is a patio heater um, that basically we think meets a need that's not currently being met by the market, particularly during these times of the COVID times here with cabin fever. So basically 
it's something that you can put outside on your table um, and fit it through your table, um, like where the umbrella hole is and actually enjoy times outside while it's cold out. Even if it's like 40 degrees outside, you can be still be very warm with our product. Um, so that's a little bit about um, why we developed the product. We are, we are finding the problems ourselves. I'm in the Chicagoland area, it's starting to get cold and I wanna be able to see people. So if you're feeling that, and if you're also seeing that in maybe North Quad, South Quad, I know we have some, some of those heaters and uh, fire pits um, starting up. If, if you're starting to get a little bit cold and you're interested in this topic, um, you can reach out to me and Scott. Um, so in the terms of the type of students we're interested in speaking to, um, anyone with maybe some marketing experience or wants to learn more about marketing, um, perhaps some legal expertise as well um, regarding like the intellectual property aspect of this. Also some supply chain um, experience might be interesting as well. And, and generally also if you're interested in the heating and cooling industry um, as well, um, we'd be happy to talk to you. So um, yeah, um, join my meeting room after. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Tyler. Um, next up is Fireside Chats. Hi everyone, I'm Brady Stiller. I graduated last year and now I'm back in Notre Dame in the nonprofit master's program. So today our generation is suffering from two problems, apathy and polarization. It's relativism that leads to apathy when people don't ultimately care what others believe because they're entitled to their opinions. And it's closed mindedness that leads to ideological polarization because people don't wanna change their perspectives and they're convinced that they're right. So how do we begin to solve these problems? We want to look to the universities Open-minded conversations may be happening at universities, but not as much as they should be due to apathy and polarization. So we're developing what we're gonna call Fireside Chats. It's a social media platform that encourages university students to have open-minded dialogues about a whole range of topics, politics, philosophy, science, religion, and hobbies. Students can select topics such as, how do you spend your free time? They can have a 30 minute conversation with one, two or three other people from universities around the country. Our social media platform is unique in that it is educational in nature and can thus be university sponsored. Apathy and polarization are the problems of our generation and we want to empower our generation to tackle the problem from within. So for team members, we're looking for someone with app development and software skills, ideally. And we currently have two nonprofit students on the team, but we would also welcome any other skills if you're really passionate about these problems of apathy and polarization and want to see college students having respectful, open-minded dialogues. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next up is Frankly Apparel. Hi everyone, my name's Heather Eaton. I was Notre Dame undergrad class of 2014 and I just graduated from Stanford with my MBA, as did my co-founder. Um, it was at Stanford that we founded Frankly. We make braless clothing for everybody um, with the goal of making the braless fashion trend more inclusive for a wider range of cup sizes. Personal problem of mine, um, it's really exciting. We actually just closed our Kickstarter today and raised $53,000. And we went on viral on TikTok uh, about three weeks ago. So we've got about 2.6 million views and almost 60,000 followers. Uh, so a really exciting start to what we hope will be a very exciting business. In particular, we're looking for people with marketing and social media experience, um, as well as pot potentially some industrial designers, people that are interested in actually doing fashion design. Um, so I will leave my information in the chat box and I hope to see you in our breakout room. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next up is Friendover. Hi, Patty. Uh, thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Renee Yassine. I'm from Friendover. And Friendover is the virtual social space designed just for young kids. So what we do is we combine features of traditional video conferencing like video chat and screen share with a bundle of fun, collaborative, and physically engaging games that kids can play with their friends online in real time. Um, and the interesting element about Friendover is that we use motion sensor technology to allow people to play games um, like virtual sports right from their living room and without requiring an, another console. Um, so it's a really exciting technology that a lot of parents have already expressed a lot of interest in. And um, if you're passionate for helping kids and families connect in innovative, unique, and healthy ways, 
ways during COVID-19 and beyond, um, definitely come to our breakout room, talk to us. Um, currently, our team is comprised of me. So I'm an, a junior at Notre Dame studying international economics and Arabic and Chris Hunt, who's my co-founder. He's a computer science student. Um, but we're actually, for the technology that we've prototyped, um, we really want two to three graduate computer science students, preferably with experience in computer vision. Um, and also some UX and UI design um, people would be really helpful as well. Uh, and also marketing and finance, um, sort of like the commercialization end of this would be um, really helpful if you have experience in that. But yeah, definitely contact us, come to our breakout room. And just if you wanna talk and learn more, you can always let me know. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next up is Gate Guide. Hey everybody, my name is Roman Gustorf. Um, I'm a 2017 Notre Dame grad from Siegfried Hall, go Ramblers. Uh, currently I'm a third year medical student at Vanderbilt University. Uh, and so Gate Guide uh, is a multi multidisciplinary team made up of a local physical therapist. I have Cody here tonight, as well as some other Vanderbilt um, medical students, PhD, PhD students and MBA students. Um, so currently patients in need of outpatient physical therapy are restricted either by financial barriers or number and availability of appointments at nearby clinics. Um, and so Cody came up with a great idea to create a uh, technology device that will attach to their walker and kind of help them promote uh, a proper and healthy gait and improve recovery. So whether this is after a surgery or after a fall, um, we just wanna make sure that people are um, up again and walking um, and improving quickly. Uh, exciting news, Cody received the first prototype yesterday. Um, and so now we've got to improve on it so that we can eventually test it out in clinics. So um, what we're looking for are students who are either interested in the engineering aspect, you know, helping us innovate and create this device um, or also some software um, side of things, you know, whether it's building up our website or helping with app development. Um, if somebody's kind of interested in some healthcare um, engineering software kind of thing, um, we'd love to talk with you and hear more about you. Thank you. Thanks, Roman. Um, next up is Gitta Sitta. Thanks, Patty. Can you hear me? Yep. All right. Hi guys, my name is Mandy Kanukan and I'm here with Get A Sitta. It is exactly what it sounds like. This is an opportunity for you to get involved with a super fun team. We are creating an app that will basically streamline the process for every desperate parent out there to line up a sitter. Um, it basically takes the network that you already have in your phone and it streamlines the communication between the parent and the sitter. Specifically, we're focusing on moms. We're the ones who are really desperate to get out of the house, especially right now. Um, and we're hopeful that as um, COVID and vaccines start coming, uh, we will have an opportunity for parents to actually get out of the house. So we're early in the process but um, we have a really great team formed and are starting on the technology and um, have a very talented developer. So what we're specifically looking for is a student that can handle just basic financials. This is not going to be rocket science, but um, we definitely need somebody that is talented in that area. And we really do want to work with a Notre Dame student. We actually had somebody in that role but due to some visa issues, um, she had to leave our team, which we were very sad. So we really are looking for somebody that can help us manage that. I'm the CEO of my household. I'm not the CFO. Um, and for good reason, we need somebody that can handle the finances of Gitta Sitta. So I will also post our uh, Zoom link in there and my children are knocking on the door. So thanks. Thanks, Mandy. Up next is Chris with Gun Guru. Hi, everybody. I'm Chris Rich, uh, the founder and head guru of Gun Guru. I've been a part-time firearm safety instructor for the last 11 years with over a thousand students. I grew up around guns with my education passed from father and grandfather around a campfire at a deer camp. The shooting sports in the U.S., though, are growing at 8.6% annually with more than 4 million new firearm owners every year, and 40% of them are women. This new segment of shooters is different from me. They don't typically have a trusted mentor. They find seeking good information from what's out there to be intimidating, difficult, and time consuming. Unfortunately, this leads to bad or unsafe choices and they can avoid safety and use instruction. 
That's why I've started Gun Guru. Gun Guru is an online customized learning and skill building platform. Subscribers get their own virtual Gun Guru coach who designs a learning curriculum specific to their needs, and that can be consumed when they want. We've also tapped into the power of AI to make personalized product recommendations, wading through a sea of confusing choices and referring them to certified affiliates. There's no other solution out there like this. And our data shows that the total market is over $600 million. 43% of new gun owners, when we talk to them, immediately sign up for launch updates. We've proven that people want Gun Guru, and now our next step is market validation. There, we're gonna build out the minimum viable product and launch it into target segments. That's coming up soon. This is gonna prove out our business model, pricing structure, and customer target. We've already got a strong four-person team that's in place with product content, basic marketing and data capabilities, but we need help. We need to complete our team with partners who are skilled in digital and social media marketing, website development, data analytics, video production, if you can do it, and brand development. I'll hope you'll agree that Gun Guru is an on-trend concept and you'll join our team. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'm going to call out somebody on the Zoom. Um, Kevin White, if you can check the chat for me, I would appreciate it. Um, next up is Latanya King with King Preferred. You're on mute, Latanya. Hi, um, Latanya King from King Preferred. I'm the owner creator of King Preferred um, Gourmet Moist um, Bakery Mixes. Uh, from Came out of a love of being in the kitchen with um, my family or my aunt specifically from the, she lived here in Indiana from the South. So I would be up under her every weekend baking and cooking. I learned to cook at an early age. And I always wanted a product or have something for people who didn't know how to cook or who wasn't as advanced as I, um, but not um, have to spend a long time in the kitchen uh, and spend more time with the family. So I create the Southern traditional uh, bakery mixes, pound cake mixes, um, cream cheese pound cake, chocolate pound cake, uh, banana pudding pound cake, and bread pudding mix. They're all quick mixes, still have the original baking time as if you made it from scratch. Um, my mixes are um, kosher certified and non-GMO. Um, so uh, and then I have my picture and everything on the side. So as you can see, it is in the uh, box. Uh, so, uh, it's kosher soda certified. So as of now, King Preferred is the first uh, minority owned bakery, kosher certified bakery mix. So I'm looking for someone who loves advertising, uh, marketing, advertising, sales. Uh, I tend to think out the box and have something no one else is doing. I love creating new catchy, contagious phrases, taglines, and I would love to really take advantage of the market of the culture certified, the OUD market, um, and take advantage of that, and also on the non-GMO, non and so if I can have someone in uh, that area, and then even if you're listening, and you see something that you know you probably would be able to help me in, I would appreciate that if I haven't thought of it, but um Digital marketing, um, just you know, being out there and doing something in advertising to catch that market. It's a small group, but yet it's such a huge market. I want to take advantage of that uh, with creative ideas. Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> next up is Little Leaves Clothing. We have Dr. Carlos on with us. Okay, I'm going to skip over that one and go to Med Digitech. Um, Hussein. Okay, um, random acts of kindness. Hey everyone, my name is Quinn and I am a graduate student in the esteem program. I am here tonight with Random Acts of Kindness or RAC for short. 
In 2012, Superstorm Sandy cost over $70 billion in damages and left countless household displaced. Just like after every disaster, people want to help, but they often donate things that turn out to be more of a burden. Overwhelmed with piles and piles of unsolicited donations, relief organizations had to throw out over half of them in order to make room for critical relief supplies. In fact, on average, relief organizations throw out over 60% of unsolicited donations. This is known as a disaster within a disaster. We need a way to improve communication, cooperation, and coordination among volunteers, donors, and charitable organizations in order to minimize the wasting of donations and resources. RAC is a management software platform that allows organizations to better manage in-kind donations by setting up something like a wedding registry where people can pledge and donate what is actually needed. Hello. With RAC, citizens have meaningful and constructive opportunity to effectively help improve conditions in their communities. To help RAC turn RAC into a reality, we hope to fill our team with one in finance, yep. one in business, and two software engineers who's well-rounded with full stack to develop track in for both mobile and web platforms. And in addition to hard skill sets, it's also very important to me that you are a well-rounded team player and you have a genuine passion to help people in need. Thank you. Sorry about that uh, over noise there from you, Quinn, apologize. Oh, no, um, okay. <laughs> so I may mute you if I find out who I can hear um, and mute you. So remember to unmute yourself when it's your turn to talk. Um, next up, I'm going to call on Kevin White with ARMS. Hi, my name is Kevin White. I'm super pumped. Basically, a year ago, my cousin reached out to me. He has muscular dystrophy, and so he's not able to use his arms. And so I've created a device for him that enables him to use his arms to, to do things such as comb his hair, brush his teeth, eat food, and just do daily tasks that we all can do on a daily basis that he's not able to currently. Um, and so we're actually expanding this to a wide range of people. So not only people with muscular dystrophy, but all sorts of diseases, and ultimately people with just upper limb mobility issues in general. Right now, uh, we are looking for... Anybody really interested in the medical device space, uh, just join the team. Uh, myself, I'm a grad student in the esteem program, background in mechanical engineering. We have uh, someone who's in mechanical engineering on the team as well. Um, so if you're at all interested, we'd love to hear from you, looking into marketing, channel sales, uh, reaching out to all sorts of things. So if this interests you uh, and you want to help change people's lives, join us. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, next up is C Satellites. Hey all, uh, I'm Mike. I'm a 2015 Notre Dame grad from mechanical engineering. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders at Sea Satellites, where we're building autonomous vehicles that revolutionize how ocean data is collected. Traditional ocean operations are handled by huge ships. Uh, they guzzle diesel fuels and are dangerous to operate due to ocean operations and bad weather, so they end up costing a lot, uh, typically $30,000 to $40,000 a day, which is a huge number. So we've built solar powered vehicles uh, that have the ability to drop the cost for customers by more than 10 X. And they'll start moving our oceans away from fossil fuel, fossil fuels uh, and towards a sustainable and smarter future. So we're pretty excited about it. Uh, we have a pretty highly technical team, uh, mostly engineers, uh, five co-founders. And we'd love to recruit some students who are hungry and wanna work on a fast moving tech team. Uh, in particular, we'd love business students. Um, if you want to dig in on competitor, uh, competitor research, market analysis, product strategy, uh, please talk to us. On the other hand, uh, if you've got some sharp web development skills, um, backend, JavaScript, PHP, uh, also shoot us a, uh, give us a shout. Great. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, next up, we're going to go with Side Dish. Hey everyone, my name is Connor and I'm a 2012 grad of Notre Dame. Um, I'm the founder of Side Dish, which makes digitally native restaurant brands that we then partner with local independent restaurateurs to then fulfill the food. Um, so what, what does that really mean? Um, we make brands uh, like picture a sweet green, but it's made by the local restaurant down the street from you. 
And then all of our food is sold through um, the independent, uh, through the third party delivery platforms like DoorDash and Uber Eats. And um, we, we just really try to make really great product for our customers um, and bring that restaurant experience home to you. Uh, so we have our first couple of customers here in the US. We're eyeing expansion into LATAM as well with a person that we're talking to down there um, who just raised a substantial amount of funding. Um, and really, we're just looking for people who are very passionate about food, passionate about building products, and um, really appreciate great branding. Um, so I I'm kind of envisioning that we have two tracks. Um, one track would be focus on brand building and digital advertising. And then the second track is more around uh, go to market and growth strategy. Um, we're trying to expand really quickly here in the US, hoping to get to 10 markets very quickly in the next couple months. And we're actively raising our first round of financing. Um, so if you're interested in any of that, please reach out to me. Um, it would be great to chat. Thanks. Thank you, Connor. Um, next up, uh, looks like we have Skyhammer. Yeah, hey, thanks for coming, everyone. My name is Mike, my partner Joe and I, uh, we started Skyhammer. Skyhammer is a counter drone technology company. We're both combat veterans. We spent a lot of time fighting drones in places like Syria, Kuwait, and Jordan. And what we found is that most counter drone technology pretty much sucks. So we built a better one and we want some uh, engineers and finance talented individuals to come join us to help make it a reality. Uh, we're pretty pumped and we hope to see you there, Skyhammer. I like it, short and sweet. Um, next up, uh, Sleep Easy. Anthony, are you here with us now? Yeah, I'm here. Awesome. Um, so Sleep Easy is an oxygen pill that we invented that's patent pending. Um, there's a number of different patient populations that need oxygen therapy. And so our pillow creates an oxygen rich environment so that people can get oxygen without uh, having to wear an, a nasal cannula. That's the tube that, that goes in your nose. Um, and so for our team, we're really looking for someone with a finance background or if anyone else is interested in, in the medical device industry, um, just hit us up, sleep easy. Thank you, Anthony. Um, next up is Solar Hay Farms. Hello everyone. I'm Otho Farrell. I'm the founder of Solar Hay Farms. Basically, our operation is a conventional and vertical farm operation. We're focused on bringing uh, the traditional methods of farming like hay and uh, other strands of varieties through traditional farming methods. But our growth strategy is to do vertical farming indoor and at a large scale. So we are looking for individuals with finance background, um, individuals who can pitch really well. We're looking to do some capital, venture capital pitching uh, in 2021. And uh, we've been in business for this year. Uh, we have uh, revenues about $18,000 for the year. Um, that's predicated on or built on our uh, conventional farming. Uh, so we're looking for individuals who are hungry to get into this space. It's a growth opportunity industry. And uh, again, engineers, finance people, and brand builders of all kinds. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next up is South Bend Culture Club. Yeah, hey. Hi, my name is Lisa Kowalski and I have with me Robin Klingerman. South Bend Culture Club is uh, currently an organization in our community that I founded two years ago, um, specifically helping South Bend um, artists, entrepreneurs, musicians, and members of the community helping to heal South Bend and bring um, holistic lifestyle and art and culture back into our community. Uh, we're looking for a space to house all the different members um, that have their different gifts, talents, products. Um, Robin's going to speak a little bit about her business and why South Bend Culture Club is important for her. Hi, I'm Robin. Um, my friends call me Misun. That's why it's called a bite with me. I want to help nurture and provide healthy. I do a lot of vegan, uh, local, organic 
want to provide something for everybody. I want you to feel like part of the family, be a house of house of this, a community for South Bend. Um, when I graduated from IU back in 2008, I was looking for alternative ways of living and how we could build the community. I obviously got pulled back to my hometown of South Bend and wanted to be able to give back to this community and provide something for growth and help us all build this relationship together so that we could all come and, and find, find that space. So um, yes, we we're looking for resourcefulness, the yep. connections to the needs of what our community is looking for. We're um, market research, business planning. Um, we also really need someone to help us find the space. Um, we are a very new business and so um, we are looking for someone with lots of experience, someone who's committed to this community and wants to give back to it. Thank you guys so much. Um, the next group up is the CODA group. Awesome. Can you guys hear me okay? We can. Excellent. So we are Kelsey and Sydney of the CODA team. Uh, you can remember us as the crazy animal cremation memorial ladies. Uh, we are pursuing a very interesting idea that's simple in our heads. For thousands of years, humans have memorialized their pets with tombstones and urns. Today, not much has changed. You go on Google, do a quick search, you'll see a ton of chintzy off-the-shelf items that have no place in a contemporary home and do little to inspire the remembrance and celebration of life. And U.S. consumers, if any of you are pet owners, we're spending a lot on our pets. $75 billion annually. And millennials are the largest cohort of pet owners seeking products that they can customize and purchase online. And we believe memorializing our pets is important. They inspire the remembrance and celebration of all the joy and good times that we have with our furry little guys. And we think they should be unique and inspiring, not off the shelf and ignored. And that's why we created Coda. We are a direct to consumer company that builds contemporary custom memorials infused with the ash of the pet that they celebrate. Codas are ordered online where customers can select their design, their colors, personalize an engraving, order for their family and friends, and then they receive an at-home kit where they can package up and send their ashes our way. And we're well on our way to launching in 2021. We've engineered our products, identified our manufacturers, and developed our processes for solidifying and infusing cremated remains. We entered this competition to secure funding for our initial product inventory, assembly, and launch. So we're looking for a really ambitious group of students that are excited about a rare opportunity. I graduated Notre Dame in 2013. My colleague graduated University of Washington in 2013 as well, but we won't judge her for that. Um, and we are looking for a few students, one, two, to actually represent us in the McCloskey competition since we're based in California and Connecticut. Um, we are looking for these individuals to gain real world experience working with us, building out a business plan, go to market strategy, and actually get the chance to put that strategy to work when we launch next year. We're also looking for a mechanical engineer or industrial design student who's looking to break into mechanical product design. You'll be tasked with development in terms of the product or hardware, learning deep industry knowledge, and you'll get to work with my co-founder who is an ex-engineer from Apple. So if you wanna join this team, we're gonna be in our room. We might have a couple of beers. It's gonna be a good time. So put the link in the chat, but look forward to talking to you guys about reinventing the way we moralize our pets. Thank you, Kelsey. Um, next up is UniApp. G'day, my name is Kieran Roach here. I, I'm representing UniApp and uh, UniApp, we're based in uh, Tucson, Arizona with that. And so you can think of UniApp similar to the Common App and it's an app that helps uh, families fill multiple scholarships at once. Uh, we found in Arizona, there's uh, scholarships available in education, but um, supporting families, especially uh, families with um, lower income or um, a Spanish speaking, unable to access these scholarships. So what UniApp does is really helps families fill out one time application through a smartphone device and then fill multiple apps. Um, we also connect with schools and supporting schools around uh, strategic management of scholarships. So we actually have uh, two client schools that we're working with. Um, we're in the first phase of migrating from a Google doc to a database 
uh, where we'll have uh, four releases through the through the uh, next year for that. And so we're really looking for students that um, just have a, a passion about education and if education seeing that as alleviating uh, poverty, breaking down prejudice and inequalities, and really giving that opportunities to um, more families to access a quality education for that and to help uh, market, business plan, finance out. We feel like we've got a new market that's kind of not there. So helping us identify what that market is. Uh, it's a new model and networking. So it's, it's really exciting. And I think it gets to the heart of what Notre Dame is about. Here is a, a French sounding college known as the Fighting Irish. Uh, so uh, it was all about the story of those Irish immigrants being served by this French community. So uh, we're continuing uh, Notre Dame's mission today and uh, doing that in the way of uh, serving families, accessing a quality education. So if, if that's uh, passionate to you and uh, the Fighting Iris, come and uh, check us out. Thank you so much. Um, next up is Asik Therapeutics. Hi. I'm Ariel Thielander. I'm here representing Zosik Therapeutics. Uh, Zosik is a pharmaceutical R&D company in the oncology space. We are myself, uh, an angel investor, and a team of Notre Dame researchers who've discovered a novel target, a drug target, for bone metastasis in breast cancer. And bone metastasis right now is considered incurable. Uh, the existing treatments don't prevent the proliferation of cancer cells in bone marrow. And we believe that our treatment with its novel mechanism is going to be able to do that. This will offer imp improved quality of life, reduced complications and increased life expectancy to women suffering from stage four metastatic bone disease in their breast cancer. Breast cancer affects over 475,000 women each year in the US alone. So we know there's a big market and the rates are steady over time. And because this disease is considered incurable, we think it's gonna have a lot of impact once we finally get to market. If you're interested in learning more about the pharmaceutical space, more about breast cancer, or more about Zosic, uh, we would love to talk with you. There's no real particular background we're interested in. Um, business people generally are gonna be helpful for our team. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, next up is Zocos. Thanks, Patty. Uh, hi, my name is Mike. I'm going to be talking to you today about Zocos. Zocos is a hybrid traditional and online retailer that resells returned e-commerce home goods. We've developed two pieces of custom proprietary software to help drive our business. Um, the first is a website aggregator. Uh, there are dozens of auction sites across the web that uh, reset, that um, sell pallets of returned e-commerce goods. This website aggregator allows us to uh, pull all of the different auctions and see which pallets are up for sale to determine the ones that are of highest value. We also have a custom app. Uh, once we get the goods, you can just scan the uh, good with the UPC code with the app and it pulls all the relevant information and allows us to uh, upload the good for sale right into uh, platforms like eBay and Facebook Marketplace. We've purchased a couple of different pallets uh, and we have a warehouse space in downtown South Bend. So we're really testing and developing our process and our model. And it'd be great experience for a student to come and see uh, how the process works and really get firsthand experience about it. We're, we're looking for two students in particular um, someone who can help us with the marketing and to develop business plans. There's a lot of groups who are already doing this. They just haven't done it at scale. And it'd be great if we could help have someone help us out how to get access to that and develop our relationships with them. And also one of our co-founders is a back-end web developer. And we are looking for someone who has some front-end web developing skills to help us work with the aggregator and app interface. Um, so if you're interested, please uh, join us and we'd love to talk with you. Thank you, Mike. Um, next up is Kevin from Hello From. Hi, if you're like me, you want to send a greeting card recently, but you got overwhelmed because there's just too many options. It's stressful, it's confusing, it's anxiety filling, and it's just the worst. That's why we're here to fix it. Hello From is a personal card buying assistant that goes shopping for you. Basically, all you got to do is you pick someone in your family, let's say it's your brother, uh, and you fill out a connection quiz. So we ask you five to ten questions based on your personality with the, your, 
your relationship with the person. And that helps us curate cards for you. So a week before the, the date of the birthday, um, we'll send you three cards and we'll say, hey, these are the three options we think will be best suited for you and your brother. You pick one and we send it to you in the mail with a stamp, with an envelope, everything pre-written, plus a hint of inspiration to help you write inside. We basically take out all the worst part about the card buying process and automate that for you so you can focus on the actual reason you buy a card to connect with people. Um, so ultimately what we're looking for, we've had a lot of demand recently, a lot of new signups, and we're just trying to keep up. So as we grow really fast, we're establishing an account management platform over the next month. So we're looking for web design, um, UX, UI, web development, uh, art, like database architecturing, and then also um, uh, marketing and sales moving forward. So if you want to have that, that viral growth like frankly talked about, uh, then, then come join our team and, and let's spark a, a movement. Thank you. I did not. Thank um, thank you guys. Uh, the next one up is Life of a Champion. Do I have anybody here for that team? Life of a Champion. All right, I'm going to go back up and do the ones that didn't um, answer when I called the first time. Uh, Dollar App Store. Little Leaves Clothing. And Med Digi Medical Digitech. Hussein Badini. All right, did anybody, did I not call on you that planned to pitch tonight? Speak now. All right, guys. Um, you guys did an awesome job of pitching. Um, you were very concise on um, everything that you needed to say. Um, so that was awesome. Um, right now, we're going to instruct all the students um, who are online to um, utilize the budget um, platform or the um, links in the um, chat to find the team that you're most interested in. Um, teams, feel free. You can leave this meeting and go to your Zoom rooms. Um, anybody that has any questions for me, um, please stay on the line. I'll be on um, to answer any questions and good luck. <laughs>